welcome to my talk. Uh, I called it Making Connections, and it's kind of a reflection on the last 10 years of what I did in the WordPress community. Um, so I put quite a lot of images of the last 10 years in there, so bear with me. I hope you can see them on the projector correctly, otherwise uh, the slides will be available afterwards as well. I'm Simon. Um, this was me back in 2012 when I started my very first WordPress meetup. But before that, uh, it took me quite some time. I started with WordPress in 2008. And it took me about three years to realize that other people use WordPress as well. I mean, I was aware that there are other people working with WordPress, but I did not expect them to be in my near vicinity, not in my own town. And it took me till my first WordCamp, WordCamp Cologne back in 2011, um, to realize there are other folks out there using WordPress, which was a strange moment for me. It took me another year to organize my very first WordPress meetup on November 15, 2012. Um, and I never really stopped since then. I co-founded five meetups, two of them being WordPress meetups, three being WooCommerce meetups. Um, I've organized two WordCamps, both of which nearly killed me. They were very stressful, so um, I'm even more grateful to local organizers like all of you to uh, chip in the time and, and do the hard work. Back in 2012, uh, I wrote a blog post, which felt like very WordPressy. Don't even try to read it, it's in German and completely useless. Um, but we used Doodle for our first, um, to find our first date. And we sticked with the day of month ever since. So we had, I think, the second Tuesday of the month, and we used that over and over again. So that's the bare minimum, as I said. Um, but let's go in a bit more detail, maybe. Preparations. Uh, there are some things you might want to do up front before you start your meetup, or maybe not before the first meeting, but at some point in time. Uh, this is the artwork we had produced a couple of years into our first meetup. Uh, where we said, oh, we need a nice logo and we want to have some fancy header graphics for our social media and stuff like that. That's not something you have to do, by the way. Um, quite important on the list of preparations is find co-organizers. You pretty likely have a couple of people in mind already. Um, you can organize a meetup on your own. I did that for a couple of years, but it's super stressful, especially if you want to do more than the bare minimum. It's nice to have a group of people around you can trust, and you can take maybe a month off if you have to do that for holidays or your own mental health sake. I already mentioned the date on the slide before, but I wanted to reiterate on that. Um, I think it's very good to find a good date. For my second meetup in Stuttgart, um, we had, I think, the third Tuesday, no, the third Wednesday of the month, every month. And at some point, we switched to another, I think, to the second Tuesday. So we just moved that thing a week forward. Um, but we doubled our attendees by doing just that, uh, because it turned out that at the same time there was a blogging meetup, and there seems to be an intersection between blogging and WordPress. So um, have a look at your local calendars and find out if there's any collision in there. If having speakers for a meetup is your cup of tea, and it doesn't have to be, um, it's super useful to invite them up front. Uh, that way you have a set topic for a meetup and you can simply go from there. You can write an invite, which I think is the next thing on the slide, yeah. Um, 
and set expectations for the attendees you want to have at your meetup so they know what they're up to. And if you're super fancy, and that's something we just started right before the pandemic, um, you can record talks that were held at your meetup. Uh, like usually talks at WordCamps are recorded, um, those can be put up to WordPress TV afterwards so other people can watch it or your attendees can rewatch it if they forgot something or want to recheck on some points made during the presentation. After the meetup, there are some hypercare things you can do in order to oh, maximize the experience. It's a very American thing to say. Um, keep a close look at the comment section on meetup.com. For some communities, there's quite a lot of chatter afterwards. People asking questions, people asking for maybe links to a plugin that was mentioned, or they're asking for help with a specific problem. And being there in this comment section is very helpful. Same, of course, if you use other social networks, if you're like very active on Twitter or Facebook or Mastodon, maybe. Be there, be engaged, and help the folks who need your help. Something I think many, even active organizers, aren't aware of is ratings on meetup.com. Um, if you attended a meetup, meetup.com will ask you for a one to five star rating, and I think you can write some short text in there as well. Um, this is very helpful for you as an organizer, uh, but if you're just an attendee, it's also very helpful to give your feedback on the speaker, on the topic, uh, which helps your local organizers to improve their meetup. Very well organized meetups have blog posts they publish afterwards. And mm, I have to say, my meetups never did that. We're not that organized. We're just a mess. We're all over the place. Um, but I think it's a very nice gesture to have like a written form, at least for the main things discussed during the meetup. Think of it as like show notes for your meetup if you are in into podcasts or something. And of course, if you record uh, the talk, then make sure to upload it in some kind of timely fashion. If I don't upload our video the next day, people will start asking for it on meetup.com. It drives me crazy and I usually say, guys, please, please wait a couple of days, but people expect it to be there, so it's nice to have it there. Let's go back to the preparation phase. And again, yeah, you can see that at least somewhat. Um, Picking the right venue is super crucial for your meetup. And that depends, I think, on the country, on the region, and even on the city you're in. Um, but this image was taken in a local bar in Frankfurt, where we went for our meetup, I think, in the second year that we had. And it's really important the meet, uh, that the venue you, you pick sets the stage for the meetup you want to have. If you were to organize a meetup in, like, let's say this room, I think it would be quite natural to expect some kind of um, speaker and attendee hierarchy, which is not necessarily something you would like to have, might want to have. Um, so think about the different settings and the different possibilities. I think for our Frankfurt meetup, we had like everything imaginable. We started out in a private university which was really nice because we had nice desks, we had a projector, we were able to show the people what we're doing. But also, this private university was in a part of Frankfurt called Frankfurt Preungesheim, um, which I never heard of before. And it took like 30 to 45 minutes by train from the central station to get there which might have been a reason why we spent like the first 12 months of our meetup all by ourselves. We were like four or five guys there and no one ever showed up. No, no, don't get me wrong. That was great. We had, had a blast. We were able to, to try some things, break some things, learn a lot of stuff. Um, but in the end, it was not that cool if you want to have like 
an audience. So after this year, we had to switch venues and we chose a bar in central Frankfurt, which was really cool because, yay, a bar with like food and drinks and it was way closer to main station. So people just went there. We grew substantially. But that had its downsides as well because that bar had football screenings every couple of months during our meetup. And I don't care for football at all. Not very German of me, I know. Um, and sometimes these screenings collided with our meetup sessions, which meant that 90 minutes of that evening were just lost for me because I sat in that bar, all the other folks were watching football, and I was like, just, uh, I don't care. So I was also quite happy to um, switch locations after another year again. Um, this time we went to a local agency. They provided us with a room. We had to set up a couple of things by ourselves every month, which was totally fine. We were able to have presentations again because we had a projector and it was way quieter in the room, which was also very nice if you want to talk to folks. So keep all of that in mind if you have like more of a school setting with a person in front talking to your audience, maybe more of a workshop kind of situation where people bring their laptops and work on sites, or if you want to do it more like eating with friends, which is also completely fine. And as I heard, that's a very popular option here in Italy, which is very cool. I, I, I envy that. So these are the different, different possibilities. Um, and I brought another picture from my uh, archive, which is one of the last meetups we had in person before the pandemic started over in Stuttgart. Um, our meetup in Stuttgart grew a lot over time. We started out as six or seven folks, and before the pandemic hit, we had regular meetups meet with 80 to 100 people. And it's hard to find a venue for that because you have to cram all of these people in some kind of space and make it nice. So we had that in, uh, at my old employers. We had to place chairs every month, which was fine. Um, but it was a lot of, of space for all to, to get around. And there are a couple of requirements you want to keep in mind if you pick a new location. Top of the list, for me at least, is accessibility, which I think is something the WordPress Foundation expects us to do as well. So to have a room that's accessible for, I don't know, wheelchair users, uh, or people are just have a hard time climbing up a lot of stairs or something. Not a hard requirement, but something I learned the hard way is pick a central location or at least something people have an easy time to get to. Don't go to Frankfurt Preungesheim because no one will join you there. Um, and I already mentioned that pick a suitable size for the meetup group you expect. It's quite awkward in a big room to have just like four people sitting scattered around. Um, while at the same time, if you have a room that's suited for 20 folks and you have 100 people attending, that's also complicated. And the price, which is something we had a hard time yet now after the pandemic, no, not after the, after the harder times of the pandemic, um, because in general, we don't have any money to pay for the venue. If you have like a bar or a restaurant, usually you don't have to pay anything because they just expect you to order some drinks, some food, and then everything's fine. Make sure that's the case up front. But for a room for like 100 to 120 people, which is what I was looking for, um, it's really hard to find something suitable. Um, the foundation will pay some of the expenses for a, I think, limited amount of time. So if that's something you have to rely on, that's okay, but maybe make sure you find a venue sponsor um, to, to get around. 
Some good sources, I think I already mentioned all of them. Um, small bars, yay, great idea. Universities, like this one, also usually a good source for venues. Public libraries often have some kind of event space, at least in Germany they do, maybe we're strange, I don't know. Um, which is also a good thing uh, to, to get your meetup started. I already mentioned agencies or companies, maybe your employer or an employer of one of your co-organizers has a suitable room for you, also a great choice. And an odd one in this list, living rooms. I talked to Matt Mullenweg a couple of years ago, I think it was in Paris, 2017, um, and he mentioned the way he set up the first ever WordPress meetup, which was in his actual living room. So if you are fine with strangers in your house, maybe that's a venue possibility as well. Now that all the venue stuff is settled, uh, let's take a closer look at the format. And maybe you can see me doing a... Yeah, some kind of dance during a presentation. I don't know what, what I did there. So, in Germany, we usually have a speaker per night at our meetups. That's not necessarily the right way to do it, because I think there isn't a right way. Um, having a panel is also quite a nice solution for that. You don't have to rely on a single person. You can throw a couple of chairs there and have two or three people share the stage and discuss a topic. Or you open up the discussion to the whole group, which is also quite a nice thing to do and have um, all people chime in with their experiences and their expertise. Um, the site clinic is a format that uh, is quite popular in Germany in the last, last couple of years. We have that at multiple meetups. So people can bring their own websites and have them, I don't know, torn apart, sounds super negative, have them be criticized in a constructive way. So folks chime in with their expertise and say, oh, your search engine optimizations could be better. Oh, your performance might be a bit better. Let me show you how to do it, which is usually quite a nice experience for the people there. And there's endless possibilities, so um, just do your own thing. Um, again, a couple of images. Um, this one was during our meetup. I think this one from Munich is one of the best examples for the get together and just eat something. It's the most German meetup experience I ever had. There were pretzels and beer, lots of beer. Um, and they were just sitting outside and having a good time, which was really nice. And a panel discussion we had in Stuttgart. During the last couple of months, the last two, almost three years, during the pandemic, we had to switch things up quite a bit. Um, a lot of meetups uh, went dormant for quite a while. Um, we in Stuttgart uh, did not do that. We switched to an online format immediately. And I'm sorry, I'm in this slide three times. It will never happen again, I promise. Um, we tried a couple of different things. I think for the first couple of months, I interviewed people during our meetup, which is also an interesting thing, but it felt like something you can only do for an online meetup. And after that, we realized that it's a nice opportunity to have because you can invite people from basically all over the world. And we had uh, speakers from New Zealand and Southern America joining our meetup. German folks who moved overseas, but who were able to give a nice presentation. And that would never happen if we just had local speakers with us in the same room. <sighs> this is something I want to reiterate, because starting a meetup can be quite hard. So I call the section, hang in there. Um, and I want to encourage you to, if you start a new group or revive an old group, um, be consistent. 
be there every time, regardless of the amount of people showing up. There was one meetup once in Frankfurt where I was the only person there because no one else came. That was okay. I, I can cope with that, but you have to be there. You have to make sure it's a fixed date. At least for us in Germany, we do usually monthly meetups, um, and it helps to have a fixed date every month, like the second Wednesday, the first Tuesday, whatever you choose. Just stick with it if it works. I personally also like to have a fixed venue so people don't have to look up directions every other month. They know they have to get there at the same time to the same place and so on. But it's also absolutely fine to switch meetups up, uh, switch venues up uh, every now and then because your venue sponsor maybe has to have some other things done in the same room. I already said that, just show up. Just be there, talk to the people at your meetup, uh, help them with their problems, and they will come back. That's basically the main, the main message here. In conclusion, um, I brought a quote of Gandhi, which I'm sure is something he said. Be the meetup you want to see in the world. Um, no two meetups are the same not in the same country and not even like neighboring cities. The vibe will be different based on the venue, based on the agenda you set, based on the way you approach the people showing up to your meetup. And I think that's wonderful. I travel around Germany every couple, um, once a year usually to meet up, at, to visit every single meetup. And it's always an experience because all the meetups are different in a wonderful way, and I really love that about the Meetup program. Don't get caught up in perfectionism. I wrote that down on that slide for myself mainly, because I suffer from that. I suffer from bad perfectionism. Um, and that's not necessary at all, because the folks showing up at your Meetup want the Meetup to be great and they will be absolutely fine if you don't have like fancy food provided for them, if you have, don't have like the fanciest of drinks or the fanciest of signage. Don't bother. Just be there, just talk to them, and you can always improve later on. And don't forget that the most important thing at a meetup are the people showing up, or the people who want to show up. So be there for them. people. Great. So, this is my final slide, I promise. Um, some example, examples for, let's call it, late-stage meetup perfectionism. Um, the community in Glasgow um, had some roll-up banners printed, which are completely neutral. They use them at their meetup, they use them at their WordCamp, and they just have like the basic amount of information there. Join the community with a couple of links to their meetup.com, um, to their Twitter account and stuff like that, which is really useful. I, I want to get something like that when I'm growing up. Um, at our meetup in Stuttgart, we had the opportunity to do digital signage. In the office building we were using, we had like a lot of displays there and we built something with WordPress um, to show some messages on these screens. And these messages varied from this is the way to the toilets to this is what we'll do next time and the time after. So that was a very cool project. And now finally, this is what I'm working on right now, which proves to be quite difficult. Um, now that the pandemic situation gets better, we want to return to in-person events while still holding the audience we gained during, during the pandemic, which is sometimes very remote, not in our own city, so we are working on hybrid meetups, which is a really hard thing to do. And if you start a new meetup, don't try to start with that, uh, but it's something I have quite a lot of fun with at the moment. So. 
this is uh, the last 10 years of me organizing meetups. Uh, thank you very much for your time. And if you have any questions, um, we can get to them now or later. I'll be here for a couple of hours still. Thank you. Thank you, Zima. Uh, any questions? Oh. Ciao, I'm Patricia from Geneva Experience Meetup Organizer. And I have a question about when you go over 50 people, isn't the foundation expecting you to, to be a work camp instead of a meetup? I, uh, I, I don't think that they expect you to be a word camp because then we have to have like a word camp every month. Yeah, that's... No. I know that, for example, the meetup in uh, New York has also more than 100 attendees quite regularly and they are still a meetup. So uh, okay. I don't think you have to do a word camp automatically. Right. But you're encouraged to if you are a group of that size. Yeah, but we we tried a meetup day in 2019 mm -hmm. in Geneva, and we were like 60. And mm -hmm. because when we do monthly, we are like 15 is not enough. A lot of energy for only 10, 15 people, and especially post pandemic. But we were thinking to do now again a longer meetup, like quarterly or something, mm -hmm. instead of monthly. But then if it goes over 50, I had that memory or maybe i'm wrong about this so it's no problem for you to be like 60 70 still being a, a meetup I, I i don't think that's a problem or at least i ignored it if it, if it was a problem so now so, so yeah. yeah i will ask the community on slack <laughs> thank you okay I'm coming, I'm Selena, I'm coming from a small town and uh, usually it's very difficult. You say uh, interviewing also people can be a solution, like um, getting the local business also interviewed or only online do you have this idea? Do you use it only online or also in presence? Like, I'm sorry. Uh, like uh, um, at some point, you say that you interviewed a lot of people, but uh, will you do also in presence, like uh, calling local business or involving other meetup or something like that, or you don't suggest to do that? No, I would suggest to do that, and that's something we we plan to do as well. So we will try to get again more involved in the local community and. Um, try to get everyone together again. Okay. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Zima. Thank, thank you. you all. <laughs>